Hi, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world today. Thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to be discussing poetry. I know poetry is on the minds of people, especially during Black History Month. We have our famous poets like Maya Angelou. And I know poetry has moved our lives. We have the poet Charles, no, not Charles Dickens. <laughs> I mean, Shakespeare, we have so many good poets. And so today we're going to talk about poetry. I am a poet. I've written poetry um, as a teenager. And that was my method of expression. And so we're going to discuss different forms of poetry. This will help you to decide on what you're going to be writing. What's your outline? What's your focus of your book? Is it going to be all one type of poetry or a mix of poetry I think poetry it it's something that's personal I don't think any one person has the same kind of poetry we all write different uh, I know a lot of people write poetry as a form of romantic language whether it's a breakup or a love of their life it's usually in the terms of romance and love and you know we get our famous songs like Taylor Swift songs and it's pretty much poetry and music. And music is the basis for what moves us. And the basis of music is the poetry, the lines, the lyrics. So we're going to think about poems and the types of poems there can be. So we're going to distinguish the overarching genres of poetry, narrative, lyrical, and dramatic. We're going to understand the origins, the features, and structures of the following forms of poetry. So we have free verse, blank verse, tanka, haiku, sonnet, sinquain, limerick, epic, and villanella. All right, let's go forward. Forward. Okay, what is a narrative poem? Narrative poems tell a complete story with a fully developed plot. Characters, settings, events, conflicts, and resolutions are all found in narrative poetry. While this genre of poetry tells a story with the beginning, middle, and end, it is still written in verse and employs poetic devices like meter, rhyme, and figurative language. What is a lyrical poem? Lyrical poems are short, song-like poems that express the emotions and feelings of the speaker. This genre of poetry began in Greece and was originally meant to be accompanied by music. While traditional lyrical poets follow strict rules, modern forms of lyrical poetry often deviate from these rules. What is dramatic poetry? Dramatic poems are written in verse and are usually meant to be recited and acted out, hence the rude word word drama. Dramatic poetry is similar to narrative poetry in that they both tell a story. Dramatic poems, however, are more theatrical. Many famous literary plays are considered examples of dramatic poetry because they are written in verse and are often performed on stage. Um, when I think about dramatic poetry, I think about spoken word. If we have any spoken word poets in the house, this would be your, this would be your genre, spoken word dramatic poetry. Okay, free verse. What is free verse poetry? It has become popular in the early 20th century. Free verse is a form of lyrical poetry. Some of the most influential poetry is written in this form. Free verse does not follow a consistent rhyme or scheme or meter. This form does not lack structure, but it does give poets freedom in how they organize and express their ideas. The blank verse. Blank verse poetry first began in the 16th century in Italy during the Renaissance. For decades, blank verse was the most common form of poetry used by English poets. It was a type used often in dramatic and epic poetry. This form strictly follows a specific meter, almost always iambic pentameter. However, blank verse does not follow a rhyme scheme. The tanka. Originating in the 17th century, tankas are considered the basic form of Japanese poetry. Tankas use vivid imagery to express gratitude and love 
of the writer and to spark reflection in the reader. Tankas consist of five lines and 31 syllables. The first and third lines are five syllables and the second, fourth, and fifth lines have seven syllables. Tankas do not have the have to rhyme or follow a certain meter. The haiku derived from the tanka, haikus are another form of Japanese poetry. Haikus are brief, simple, and direct in the ideas they express. While haikus traditionally describe nature over the centuries, they have become a fun, beginner-friendly form of poetry written about any topic. Haikus consist of three lines with five syllables in the first and third lines and seven syllables in the second lines. The sonnet. Sonnets originated in Italy sometime during the 13th century. A classic form of poetry, sonnets have taken on many variations over the years. They often describe trials of romantic love and the human experience. This form consists of 14 lines written in iambic pentameter that are connected by a specific rhyme scheme. Two major variations of sonnets are the Petrarchian, which is Italian, and Shakespearean, which is English. The epic. Perhaps the oldest form of poetry, epics are a type of narrative poetry. Epics tell long, grandiose tales of ancient heroes and their journeys, the doings of gods and goddesses, and the adventures of danger and glory. The structure of epic poems depends on the culture in which it is written. Some epics follow a strict meter, while others use non-rhyming alliterative verse. Last but not least, Vel Villanelle, originating in France, Villanelle, I would say, Villanelle, 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 <laughs> are song-like poems. Villanelles can focus on any topic, but many famous examples focus on topics of obsession and topic or topics that capture the poet's attention. Consisting of nineteen lines, groups into six stanzas, Villanelles follow a strict rhyme scheme and use repetition. So now that we looked at all the different types, which one sounds like something you would like to do? Personally, for me, I like free verse. That's easy. You don't need to do any rhyming. You don't have to count any syllables. Very simple and easy. Some people are very talented where they can count syllables. I also like to mix in... Um, the, the, the epic seems to be something of old culture since it's about doings of gods and goddesses and heroes, that sounds kind of like a movie of some sort, like like um, some sort of movie. Um, the sonnet is about romantic love and the human experience. That reminds me of like Taylor Swift songs. Um, haiku is very short, but there's also, there's syllables that you have to be consistent with, three lines with five syllables in the first and third lines and se seven syllables in the second line. It's very, very specific. You have to be specific. Um, the tanka also has very specific way to do the lines where you have to count the syllables and the words. If you're not good with language and syllables, I wouldn't advise doing it. Um, the blank verse usually has a specific meter as well, usually iambic pentameter, um, but it doesn't follow a rhyme scheme. So I... This one is a little difficult as well because you have to have a specific meter. So you have to be specific about that. Kind of restricts you. So free verse, I like free verse. Um, I think that's the easiest one. There is no restriction on it. I usually do that. Um, dramatic poetry, I think I've heard this when you go to a spoken word event. Um, they usually tell a story. So that would be more inclusive to lyrical, um, sharing your emotions and feelings or narrative where they're telling about maybe their history, their past. So you can mix and match. You can mix and match the narrative poetry with the lyrical poetry and with also dramatic poetry and maybe even a little bit of the sonnet the free and the free verse. So those are the ones I would use. I think those are the easiest ones to do um, unless you really like to count syllables and lines. But those are what I would do. So in terms of outlining um, what you're doing, first you need to have a body of poems that all consist of a theme. 
pick your theme, pick your, your, your statement, whatever that may be, whatever, you know, it's a statement that you stand behind something you stand for, something you notice, something you observed, and then you continue to write poetry about that theme. And that's how you would do um, a, a poem about that. So let me leave that there. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I just wanted to share with you a an example of a I want to share with you an example of my own poetry. So I started a book that I will be publishing this month and it's nearly done. Um no that's not it. Uh let's see. So let me just find it really quick. So for me, I have a theme for my poem, so I will share this with you. This is what you're seeing here. So this is the table of contents for the book that I'm writing that I've written, or it's already written. So I already had the poems done already. And the poems, this is the table of contents. So the theme of the book is happy things, happy little things actually. And that's the book that I'm publishing coming out this month. And it's all about things that make me happy. So it's like a list basically. It's just a list of gratitude things that I'm grateful for. So this is a poem about being grateful for little things. And that's the theme of the whole book. So every poem is about what I'm grateful for. And then I don't even leave it at just poems. I also have like small paragraphs of thoughts and reflections on the different things. And that is what I included in this book. This is just one book. I have other books, but they are on different themes. And this is one of the themes. So this was the table of contents for that book. And I uploaded it today to Kindle Direct Publishing so that that book can be published. So what you want to first come up with is a list of poems with the titles to start off your table of contents. So you want to do something of this nature, list every single poem. So these poems, they're only about, what, 30 of them? It's not many. This is a very small poetry book. It's very short. It's not very long, which is fine. I think people don't like long books anyway. So it's okay if you have a short book. All it matters is that you are sharing your creativity. It's all about creative expression. And so that's the first step is getting your outline. You can focus on the type of poetry inside of each poem but first get an outline of what kind of theme are you going to be focusing on what is going to be the focus of every poem whether it's romance or a story is it about your father or your mother or your child or your grandmother or your pet what is it about your work environment your home your home country your homeland it could be about anything and every poem points to the same theme so it's a very closed loop every poem is about the same similar focus and that's what you're trying to accomplish and so for today that's what I want to leave you with I want you to focus on what kind of poems you're going to be writing you can be very strict with pentameter and meter and and rhyming or you could be very loose and flowy and and use lyrics and drama and free verse and narrative you could just do all of those things it's all about just letting your creativity fly so I leave it to you to fly with your creativity and I hope that helps you in some sort of way to get a gist of what's going on and I will stop the share and I thank you for joining me